Just after quarter to seven. Morning. Uh, car sales fell again last month and apparently dealers are having to knock a lot off the asking price. Yeah, Steph's looking into what's going on. Very good morning. Yeah, morning to you both. Yeah, tough time for the uh, car industry at the moment. Mor morning, everyone. Yeah, sales of new cars fell by nearly 5% last month and in particular, diesel sales slumped by 20%. Now, the people that put all of these numbers together are blaming consumer confidence, the fact that there isn't much of it around, and a lack of incentive to encourage us to switch to the new cleaner cars. Now it means dealers are getting a lot more desperate now to shift the vehicles that they have. So according to one estimate, the average potential discount on a new car at the end of last month was around £2,500 or 8% off the average asking price. But the chances are you may not get the deal unless you are prepared to haggle. So with us is Darren Moss, who's deputy editor of What Car magazine. So is it a good time to buy a car, would you say? Absolutely. In fact, our research shows it's never been a better time to buy a new car. £2,500 off the price of a new car, as you said, that's our target price research. So we know that dealers are offering that price. Now it's up to consumers to go in and ask for it. And is it a case of, like I mentioned there about haggling, do, do you need to do that? Absolutely. Now, new cars are priced with a margin to manoeuvre in mind. So, in other words, if you don't haggle, you could end up paying over the odds. But it's also important to remember, you can't just haggle on price. There's all the other extras you can haggle on as well. A choice upgrade, for example, or an option like sat-nav, paint protection, even servicing. Things that make your car better or more practical. Yeah, I always think I'm not very good at haggling. So, have you got any advice for... I want to be haggler. I well, <laughs> the first thing to do is know the target price for that car. Know the price that you, the dealer is willing to pay. That gives you the, you the power as the buyer. But I guess the most important thing is be confident. Do your research. Know the type of car you're interested in. Know what's out there on the market. And know that ultimately, if you don't like the deal, you can walk away. How do you know what their target price is? So we have uh, people on the phone all day, every day, talking to car dealers, haggling on your behalf, finding out how low they'll go. We then print that number online and in What Car magazine yeah. so that you can go in armed with the number that you know the dealer is prepared to pay. Now, talking of the dealers and the, and the industry itself, I mean, are they still making money on the cars they're selling? What are we talking about here in terms of their margins? So margins vary on a number of factors. It depends what you're buying, when you're buying, and how you're buying, and where you're buying as well, because obviously location comes into that as well. We see margins on popular segments from anything to 2 to 5%, but also as high as 12 to 15%. So no matter what segment you're buying in, no matter what, all those factors, go in and try and haggle, because chances are you can get a good saving. And they're still making money from the sale. Yeah, they'll be making money, but it's important to remember that actually selling you the car is not where the dealer makes the, their most money. It's actually in the bolt-on extras, things like servicing plans, things like paint protection, alloy wheel insurance, the kind of things that you might think, well, do I really need that? And it's up to you as a consumer to figure out if you do need that. That's where the dealer is going to make their real money. Is there a particular type of car where it's, you, you, you're going to get a better deal? Because obviously diesel cars, I just mentioned there, their sales are slumping. So, you know, it's, it, what do you think on that front? I think diesel cars still make sense for a lot of people. If you do a lot of miles on the motorway, if you cover huge miles in a year, then a diesel car still makes a lot of sense. And the latest diesels, in some cases, can be cleaner than their petrol engine alternatives. But it's also worth looking at the type of car. So a popular car like an SUV, you might not get as much of a saving on as you would if you look at a less popular segment, like a people carrier or a family saloon. Those two segments have massive savings. But a diesel car could be a good deal even though there are you know lots of talk about different levies and things that might come onto them in the future. Absolutely. Now it's one of the things you might say is that if I buy a diesel car will it then be worth less when I come to sell it? But 90% of us buy on finance whether that be leasing or a PCP deal and in that case it's the manufacturer that takes the risk. You don't have to worry about selling the car on. Interesting. Darren lovely to see you. Thank you very much for coming in to chat to us. Uh, that's it for me for now. I thought you would be a haggler. Yeah, I'm not. I, 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 I think I get too nice about it and think I don't <laughs> want to take too much money away from them or whatever. I'm rubbish at it. <laughs> Thank you both very much. <laughs> what kind of watchdog presenter are you? Exactly, I, think... I know, exactly. I know. And I'm, I'm a person who has to go out and say all this about everybody should haggle. <laughs> and then I'm rubbish at it. <laughs> Excellent. Could a robot sit here and do this? I'm sure lots of people will say <laughs> Anyone yes. Anyone could do yeah. Yes. <laughs> but lots of us, more and more of us, our jobs are under threat from automation.
Uh, Steph's here to tell us more. Yes, morning to you. Well, of course a robot couldn't do your job. Oh. How would the personality be? Um, I am actually a robot. Are you? Yeah, I'm just yeah. a really bad robot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a new research that's out. And, and, you know, this is something we've talked about before, about the, the digital revolution and what that will mean for jobs and the, the changing workplace. So it's new research from Open University, and they have found that 37% of jobs in the UK uh, are either going to dramatically change over the next five years or they're going to disappear completely and they're saying that is because of things like artificial intelligence and and, do, and basically just the rise in the use of, of digital on top of that we've had the likes of the bank of england talking about this as well saying there's going to be a fourth industrial revolution and this will mean that we need to revamp our skills in order to make sure lots of people don't end up out of work because of it so um it, it's not a case of suddenly all of the jobs are going to go it's more just that as the workplaces are changing in the way we do things, uh, that we, you know, we need to adapt for that and make sure our skills are right. That's a lot of jobs, isn't it? 37%. And what sort of jobs? Well, it's everything really from, uh, for example, the accountancy firm PwC have talked about how financial services could be something that becomes automated because, you know, in some particular jobs, there's a lot of repetitive calculations. Uh, also with uh, the driverless cars, we perhaps won't need as many drivers. Uh, and even journalism as well. Mm. So... Um, uh, the, the financial um, journalism firm Bloomberg, they have said they already have a system in place where financial data can be analysed and then it can be written up as a story which looks like it's been written by a journalist as well. So it, it's creeping into lots of different areas of, of our lives. But I suppose, how do you how do you prepare for that? How, yeah. do you, how do you protect yourself from yeah, the robots? Well, of course, there's, you know, there might be people out there going, oh, you know, that means I'm oh. going to be out of a job. But I think it's about just the, the fact that we need to reskill in, in many ways or, or just keep up to date with uh, what's happening digitally. So, again, as part of this research that the Open University have done, they've said now that um, there's been an increase in the amount of money companies spend on um, digital training so that's up by about 13 percent the amount of money being spent and, and, and it should be things like that which make a difference the idea being is that we work alongside robots or we, you know we are the people who develop them we'll need lots of people to do that so it's about making sure people have the skills to be able to do that so they can work alongside of them rather than them just completely uh, taking over everything so you're safe for now is, that's is exactly what point. i think we're safe for a bit aren't we yeah Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. See <laughs> you later. <laughs> so now, 23 minutes past eight. A rent day for retailers today. Uh, so how will the struggling high street cope? Steph. Yeah, this is the quarterly rent day for quite a lot of retailers out there, basically when they, of course, have to pay their landlords. And the reason why we're talking about it is because it's normally a bit of a crunch point for any businesses out there that are struggling because they will owe an awful lot of money to uh, to the landlords. And we've seen in the past quite often, you know, uh, businesses like Debenhams talking about trying to get rent reductions in order to help them. And, and I just wanted to use this to give us a bit of an update on what's yeah. going on. So, for example, Monsoon at the moment, the accessories... Uh, at stock clothing and accessory store are trying to get a rent reduction from their landlord so they're trying to go through this agreement on that and they're trying to get it for half of their stores so it's about 135 of them where they're in negotiations to try and reduce the rent and, and basically save the business and they're saying very much there's no risk of any job losses or store closures at this point but you know a rent reduction would help them also bath store this is of course um, the uh, bathroom retail uh, specialist they are also saying uh, looking at problems that they're having with their business and and seeing what can be done about the rent with them they've got uh, 168 stores which has put 700 uh, jobs at risk at the moment but again with them it's it's trying to renegotiate things and and also it's that point when other buyers might come in and look at them and say is it worth us snapping up some of these companies and, and taking over those retail units so we've got that going on and then over the weekend there was all the stuff about patisserie valerie of course this is the cake mm -hmm. shop and uh, the fact that five of their t uh, team the management team have been arrested because of allegations around uh, alleged accounting fraud so there's a lot going on again in the high street at the moment. For landlords it's difficult isn't it because yeah. you know you reduce the rent for one company and then yeah. and then it all yeah but it is a big, big pressure yeah. and there's also lots of discussion about whether it's a bit out of date, the, the rent mm. system now and the fact that it is still this quarterly system, could there be other ways of doing it? So, yeah, that, that's it's something that I know a lot of businesses struggle with when they're having trouble. Um, I, I, you may not have any of these. Have you got any kind of life hacks how to make your life much easier, Steph? 
I mean, I tried. Have you seen the garlic one yet? We... Yes, I have seen that. That's brilliant, isn't it? I don't cook well, otherwise. Well, I tried I it yesterday. <laughs> Did you? It's... Did you manage it? It's not as brilliant as it looks when somebody's not quite a easy. an expert too. But it's yeah, they've helpful. probably done it 50 times before they filmed it. I think, I think, in my judgment, more than 50. We're talking about life hacks a little bit later.